Chapter 3, Book 4, A Valiant Heart They were in the council chambers listening to old men and women talk about the state of Vaster, and Ava felt as if she were going mad. Day after day, she'd listened to them drone on about a city they pretended to know everything about. But as time wore on, she began to see that facade crumble, revealing the truth beneath. Like she should have expected, it came down to greed and corruption. These men and women were concerned more about their levies and taxes than the lives of everyday citizens. Why was she here anyway? It was at Lord Nolan's request, Steward of Vaster, who now sat at the high chair. But what was she really to these nobles? An ornament, a figurehead, the Ronin of Sun. She voiced her opinion often at first, but quickly realized that they listened without listening. Now it came to it. Ava felt her fists ball at her side. She had done what she had set out to do. She had fulfilled her destiny, bringing back the Sword of Sun and restoring balance to the City of Sun. Meanwhile, time wasted away. She felt an urge to fulfill a deeper cardinal mission. Out the window, the sun was rising, gloriously bathing the illustrious City of Sun, a city of mirrors, glassy columns, and shining, shimmering spires. That itch needed to be scratched. Where was Grey? Where was Zane, Evangeline, and Helix, for that matter? And that is why I propose we push the forth the export fee. Ava rose, pushing back her chair. Council looked at her. An old man with long white hair, Councillor Godfrey, spoke. Did I say something wrong, my dear? They all watched her, and for once she knew what they saw. A girl, an outsider, young, impetuous, and, in their eyes, there was a note of fear. After all, she was a ronin, with the power to level this room and all in it. Reaver Logan, a four-stripe reaver and ambassador from Farbs, stood as always to the side of Councillor Godfrey. Nothing, Ava said finally. I need some fresh air. Please excuse me. With that, she turned and whisked out of the council hall, hearing Lord Nolan's entreaties, but she was gone. No more politicking, she thought. No more waiting. Immediately, she felt relieved once the double doors closed. Behind her, their judging gazes ended. She made the right decision. She found her way to the ramparts that overlooked the City of Sun and was breathing easier. Ava heard footsteps, turning when she saw Lord Nolan, clad in golden armor with immaculate white robes beneath. Uh, beneath. He had a kindly face. Lord Nolan had a permanent crease between his white between his brow, a wrinkle born of furrowed worry. Along with his raptor-like eyebrows, it gave him a pensive, wise air for his age, which couldn't have been much older than her father had been. Well, I thought it was only me, Lord Nolan said. I've wanted to throw myself off these walls, too, after being in that room for more than an hour. She said nothing, and he seemed to be trying to read her, concerned like a father in his kindly features. Lord Nolan looked at her side, askance. Mind if I... She nodded and looked out over the city. He joined her, staring out over the marble edifices, people walking to and fro like tiny ants. Too few, she knew. Too many people had been lost up to the sickness that had plagued the city. These are your people, Ava. Ava smiled sadly. They are, but they don't see me as such. Not yet. If you're talking about the counselors, she shook her head. No. It's not just the counselors. They don't bother me. He eyed her with a sidelong glance. Much, she admitted. But the looks they give me and the others, I know they're not alone. Some doubt, others are certain, and many more fear us. She looked at Lord Nolan, who avoided her gaze, and touched his arm. My lord, you know I'm not wrong. I've been among them, holding the sword of sun. I've seen their looks of hope, but beneath that, is fear. Something reserved for creatures like Xerox and Bergs. The same fear you get when you wake and still question if you're in a nightmare. Lord Nolan looked, turned to look at her with one arched brow. And you believe it would be different somewhere else? She could hear the doubt in his voice, the fatherly fear. It made her heart ache for missing her own father. 
It will be worse, she admitted. I know. Then why go? At least here you are a true citizen of Vaster, in your heart, in your soul. Because if I can't be home here, truly, then where can I be home? So then why leave? I don't understand. Ava looked at Nolan Nolan. Why are you so kind to me? She asked suddenly. The question seemed to throw him off because Lord Nolan scrubbed a hand through his hair before answering. I... I see my daughter in you, which is much like her mother. Both strong women. You were no different. I see an iron will, a sun burning inside of you. I know the world will try to snuff that flame. The world should pay more attention to strong women who make their own destiny. Besides, you are a ronin. I see a need for the old ways. When the ronin and the great kingdoms were as one, I think it can be so again. I wish it with all my heart. A return to an age of peace. Ava saw there were tears in his eyes. I believe deep down you are that answer. Maybe, but not sitting in some ivory tower listening to old men and women gossip, Ava said, wrapping her fingers in thought. She gazed out beyond the city to the rolling green hills, towards the other cities, as if she could see the great kingdoms, restless and broken. Eronia, kingdom of metal, was swarming with evil. Kovai, kingdom of flesh, was uncaring and oblivious. Lander, kingdom of stone, was lost and any who traveled in the deep stone cliffs to the east were never seen again. Morrow, kingdom of wind, once the head of the spear and the unifier of the nine, had seemingly vanished. Its place on the Renar cliffs, just a barren patch of land. Eldos, kingdom of leaf, was taken by the enemy. Dryan now converting his elves towards a path of darkness. Narum, kingdom of moon, was a thieves' den. And Vaster, a hollow shell of its former self, from the curse that had plagued its people. Farb's kingdom of fire and home of reavers and Davari was willing to help, she knew, but out of the nine, peace and unity was a far-flung notion. The world is in turmoil. I've heard of Euronia's darkness and the trouble in Eldos. The kingdoms are fractured. Euronin, and <laughs> we're far from whole. Her hands balled into fists as she remembered their stares, their fear. They fear what they don't understand. What will you do? Lord Nolan, Lord Nolan asked at her side. I must find the others, Ava said. And how will you do that? I... Ava realized she didn't really know. Up until now, each new Ronin had sort of just wandered into their lives, as if by fate or dumb luck. Grey and Darius, she had felt a pull, drawn to each, and Helix had sort of just stumbled into their path. But now... She doubted it would be that simple every time. She would have to find the others. But how? She wasn't certain. I'm not sure, she admitted. To be honest, I'm kind of making this up as I go. Lord Nolan leaned in and winked conspiratorially. You're not alone. I still wake up most days and confused as to how I'm wearing this ring. He said, I'm the golden ring worn by each previous monarch of Vaster that represented his rule as steward. It had a yellow gem in the center that glowed like a sun road. Or this, he said, gesturing to his grand golden shoulder armor with a phoenix in flight, another symbol of his reign. I always found it a little ostentatious, to be honest, as if rulers of Vassar are supposed to be moments from riding into battle, instead of what we actually do, sit around a table arguing with a bunch of old fools. Ava laughed and said, Hardly. Personally, I think it looks grand on you. Steward of Vaster chuckled. You don't need to flatter me like the counselors, Ava. I already like you, he teased, and lightly rested a hand on her shoulder. What I'm saying is, don't be afraid to jump and grow wings on a fall down. Jump and grow wings on a fall down. Ava took a deep breath. All I know is that the world sees us as nightmares. Someone once told me that people fear what they don't understand. If they can understand us, perhaps they won't fear us. The notion settled, conf confidence bloomed inside her, hope swelling. As it did, she felt her power stirring, 
felt her limbs tingling. I'm going to make them understand. Show the world we aren't something to fear, but something to inspire. Lord Nolan's eyes went wide, looking to her as if, What? What is it? Ava asked. Don't look now, but you're glowing. Ava looked down and saw her arms. Sure enough, they held a faint golden glow, as if she had a honey-colored steam faintly rising from her body. Instead of fear or quenching the sun, her nexus that burned inside her mind, Ava embraced it. She raised her hand, letting the golden glow grow until a miniature sun danced in her palm, rotating slowly. Strong women make their own destiny, Lord Nolan declared. What can I do? Ava turned to him. Send word. Tell the others to meet me in the Chapel of Light. This may be my decision, but I'm not alone. We'll have to convince the others of our next step. Helix is impatient and wants nothing more to find his ancestral city. And Zane is... Zane was still brooding over the death of his sister. Let's hope... Let's hope I can find the words to convince them. Lord Nolan nodded. I'll send word at once. One last thing, Ava said and winced, her power and glow vanishing. And you're not going to like it. The steward of Astor quirked a silver brow, giving his best stern, fatherly stare, and she did her best to meet it. I'm going to take the sword of Sun. End of chapter three of book four.